Guys, my name is Ankush Kaurav and I welcome you to Contu series. In this tutorial, I will show how to support XML format for the REST APIs which we developed so far in this Spring Embassy project. Means these two REST APIs. Okay, so far we have been supporting only one format and that is JSON for these REST APIs. And now what we want? We want to support one more format and that is XML format in addition to JSON format for these REST APIs. So let's start. Because if you remember when we supported JSON format for these REST APIs, what all steps we performed? Well, the only step which we performed was to include these three jars onto the class path of this project means we included these three jars under lib folder of this Spring MVC project and we were done. So after that step, Spring MVC framework automatically started supporting JSON format for these REST APIs. Now when we want to support XML format, exactly same kind of step we need to perform. We got to go to the web, we got to download some jars and we got to include here under lib folder and thereafter Spring Framework is going to you know automatically be supporting XML format for these REST APIs. So question is which jar we got to download from web which is going to support XML format for these REST APIs. Well the only jar which we need is Jackson data format XML and that's all about it. So let's very quickly get this jar from the web and um, thereafter I'll show how to use that jar to support XML format for these REST APIs. Let's go to Google and type here Jackson data format XML. It will take us to the Maven repository for the same. And here if you observe it's showing us various versions of Jackson data format XML jar, you know, which are currently available in the Maven repository. So which version we are going to use? Well, it depends on which spring version you are using in your spring embassy project, because I'm here using spring 432 release and the compatible version for this spring, you know, for Jackson data format XML is 281. So I'm going to make use of this version for this jar. And in your case, uh, choose an appropriate version, you know, according to which Spring version you are using. All right. So let me click over here. And here we have reached to Jackson data format XML 281 version. So how to get this jar? I just got to click on this link and it will start downloading this jar for me. Now an important point to understand here is even after downloading this jar and including onto the class path of this project still the project is not going to support XML format. It will show some kind of errors when you request it to you know send response in XML format. Why? The reason is this jar further depends on few other jars. For this jar to work properly, you have to download those jars as well. Because these are the six jars on which this jar depends. So you got to download these jars as well. Now, if you look at first three jars, Jackson Core, Jackson Annotations, and Jackson Data Bind, well, these three jars we have already present in our workspace. So these jars we included when we supported JSON format for this Spring Embassy project. So we just got to include these three jars, which we do not have currently in our Spring Embassy project. So I would click here the link for the same and here I would click on download 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 these three jars as well 
Cool. So we have downloaded these uh, four jars. So this jar we wanted to download Jackson data format. And because this jar further depends on these three jars, so we downloaded these three jars as well. Now let's include these four jars onto the class path of this project. Copy. So these are the jars which we have just downloaded. Let's copy them and paste it here under lift folder cool see data format jacks p annotations and then stacks two and then woodstocks these are the four jars which we just downloaded and we have kept under lift folder so now we have all jars present in this project onto the class path which we need to support XML for these REST APIs. So very quickly, start the server and uh, test these REST APIs for XML support. Guys, to test these two REST APIs for XML support, I'm going to make use of Postman tool, which I showed you know how to use in the last tutorial. So to launch Postman, let's go to Google Chrome, click on Apps button, and here it's showing all the extensions of this Google Chrome browser. So from here, from this list, I'm going to choose Postman extension, and it's going to launch Postman for me. And here it is. Here, I want to test this REST API. Now, this REST API demands that I make GET request on it. So let me choose here GET option, which happens to be the first option. Now, thing is, when I'm going to make a HTTP request on this REST API, what's going to happen? The request is going to be received by this REST API controller method. And now point is, this REST API controller method supports JSON format as well as XML format. So in what format it's going to prepare and send the response? Well, when a REST API controller method supports more than one format, then it's client's responsibility to specify along with the request in what format it wants to view the response. So here, in this case, client need to specify here while making the request in what format it wants server to respond JSON format or XML format and how it can send that information along with the request well it has to attach a header with a key accept along with this request to the server and how to do that you have to go to the headers tab and here you have to include a key with the name accept with its value as application slash XML. Now, if you want to request server, hey server, please send me response in XML format, then you write here application slash XML. And here, if you want to request server to send response in JSON format, in that case, write here application slash JSON. So because we want to first test uh, XML support, so let's keep here application slash XML for accept key. And now let's uh, make the request. So when I'm going to press enter, it's going to make HTTP get request on this REST API. And along with this request, it's going to send a key and a value, you know, accept with its value as application slash XML to the server. Cool. So here server has sent us the response in the XML format. Guys, now this REST API supports XML in addition to JSON format. And this is the proof for the same. Now let's request for the response in JSON format by changing application slash XML to application slash JSON. See here, now this time server has sent response in JSON format. 
In the similar ways, we can test this second REST API as well. Here, let's type the name in the end, make a get request. We want a response in JSON format. So we got response in JSON format. And when we type here XML instead of JSON, we'll get response in XML format. So that's how we are able to get response in the desired format from the server. Because in the next tutorial, we will learn about a very important argument known with the name produces, which we pass to request mapping annotation, which helps us restricting a particular REST API controller method to support only one format and not more than one format. All right, guys, a big thank you for learning REST API concepts using Spring MVC framework with me. If you have any feedback or any constructive comment, please provide them below the video or simply write to me using this email ID for all of your queries. Please hit the like button if you really like this video and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Gone2Series. And I'm going to catch you in the next part of this tutorial.